Tonight, the solar system holds its breath, a long, intense anticipation. The third known interstellar body, codenamed 3I Atlas, approaches Mars at a mere 0.1 time astronomical units, as every orbiter circling the red planet pivots to observe it, chasing clues about its nature. Yet this is not simply another entry in the comet catalog. This object is unlike anything astronomers have encountered before. Our observations suggest that 3I Atlas defies almost every established rule of cometary behavior, elevating it from a mere cosmic anomaly to a phenomenon that could challenge the very definition of alien technology. Its glowing emerald green coma, erratic microaccelerations, and a chemistry dominated by carbon dioxide have already shattered every convention in the cometary textbook, with Earth-based observatories rendered blind during conjunction only a handful of Martian spacecraft stand between humanity and the truth. Is 3I Atlas a strangely formed natural comet, or an engineered construct, a marvel of extraterrestrial craftsmanship? As its exhalation fragments into peculiar pulses, spectral oddities, and light signatures that defy familiar categories, it holds the potential to profoundly rewrite our understanding of visitors from the stars. The next six hours will determine the fate of this cosmic enigma, this window, before Earth completely loses sight of 3I Atlas behind the sun's glare, will push the boundaries of science. At just under 30 million kilometers from Mars, the interstellar object passes the red planet precisely when our instruments on Earth are forced into silence. This blackout is not caused by error or poor planning. It is dictated by celestial geometry. For this brief passage, Mars transforms into the solar system's solitary listening and observation post. Every significant asset in Martian orbit, MAVEN, Mars Express, ExoMars TGO, shifts into high-cadence monitoring. Their teams blend rehearsed protocols with live improvisation, as the specialized Red Watch crew within MAVEN's mission control assumes critical responsibility. These are specialists trained for contingencies, operators trusted to act decisively at the razor edge of anomaly. In the tense hours leading to blackout, they execute rapid switches between ordinary scientific work and burst spectroscopy, poised to react if even faint alerts illuminate their displays. Backup sequences are uploaded, joint rehearsals run with Mars Express and TGO. Every command requires multiple confirmations, every packet of data is redundantly copied. There is no allowance for a single point of failure when the rest of the solar system is blind. The observing schedule is brutally tight. Mars Express transmits stacked exposures every few minutes, striving to catch the faintest sign of fragmentation or a course shift. ExoMars, TGO's instruments sweep the coma for alien spectral fingerprints. While MAVEN's plasma sensors and magnetometers record ionospheric tracings, searching for any hint of unnatural activity. Power margins and telemetry allocations are stretched to the limit, with observation windows negotiated down to the minute. If a sudden eruption of water ice occurs, Mars Express is prepared to slip into safe mode, sacrificing science to protect the spacecraft. Abort thresholds are defined barely a third beneath prior extended limits. Earth's blackout is not merely a communications outage. It is a planetary stress test of the scientific system itself. The Red Watch Coalition functions like a nervous system, shuttling commands and data through narrow links, overseeing instrument health, and coordinating with ground assets such as Perseverance and Jurong. In mission control, time is not measured by clocks but by the rhythm of cometary opportunity. Outside the agency's amateur observers stand ready. From small observatories in India to robotic telescopes in Arizona, they monitor for the first photometric flash, ready to upload to the Global Alert Network. For these six hours, the fate of the observation and the question of whether 3I Atlas is a cosmic anomaly or an engineered visitor rests in the hands of a few orbiters and their human crews. The risk is tangible. The margin for error is incredibly thin. When the window closes, every second becomes a potential tipping point. 3I Atlas has been tracked with unexplained signals since its initial detection. The earliest clues arrived from a rooftop telescope in Pune, India, where astronomer Priya Rao noticed a repeating flicker on the light curve, brightening and dimming with a rhythm too precise to dismiss. Initially curious, this peculiarity grew as professional surveys joined the watch. Photometric data revealed sharp bursts at intervals far too regular to be random. Pulses arriving in nearly identical spacing, each with a crisp onset and clean decay, resembled nothing observed from ordinary comets. 
Even as the object approached the sun, the rhythm persisted, undampened by noise or interference. Spectroscopy brought a second revelation. Instead of water vapor, the dominant spectral lines belonged to carbon dioxide. The CO2 to water ratio was 8 to 1, far higher than any comet yet cataloged. The imbalance was so extreme that laboratory models struggled to reproduce it. Polarimetry added its own puzzle. The coma's emerald glow correlated with an unusually deep negative polarization phase, a signature more common to dense carbon-rich asteroids than to dusty comet nuclei. Dust trails traced wider, thinner arcs than standard models could predict, as though released in steady bands rather than chaotic jets. Astrometric tracking generated further tension. Micro accelerations, minute coarse nudges inconsistent with known outgassing profiles, aligned with each light pulse, binding motion and brightness into a single phenomenon. No anomaly stood alone. Together they formed a portrait of an object beyond ordinary categories. Each data set, photometry, spectroscopy, astrometry, expanded the dossier of strangeness. The evidence demanded an explanation that could reconcile all pieces at once. Most planetary scientists began with the simplest hypotheses, physics and chemistry. Four principal models were constructed and tested against the growing dossier. The first invoked chemistry, perhaps three-eye atlas formed in a particularly cold nursery where water froze out while CO2, CO and other volatiles dominated. The second focused on structure, deep pockets of volatile ice could explosively vent once illuminated. A third model emphasized dust dynamics. Finally, physics itself. Perhaps microaccelerations and synchronized pulses reveal subtle interactions of light, gas, and dust not yet accounted for. In this view, anomalies are not evidence of design, but reminders of the limits of our models. For every puzzle, the scientific rule remains. All natural explanations must be exhausted before invoking anything extraordinary. For these six hours, Mars becomes the only eye. MAVEN, Mars Express, and ExoMars TGO together form the backbone of the campaign. Each brings unique instruments and distinct vantage points. MAVEN's ultraviolet spectrograph sweeps for faint emissions, seeking signs of fragmentation or hidden outbursts. Mars Express, armed with its visual camera and infrared spectrometer, tracks the coma in stacked exposures. ExoMars TGO, through its ACS spectrometers, measures gases for isotopic ratios or molecular fingerprints. On the surface, Perseverance and Jurong listen for indirect signs. The checklist is strict. Fragmentation, evolving dust, spectral lines beyond known chemistry, isotopic ratios inconsistent with local bodies, correlated pulses with motion. Every anomaly reported by one asset must be confirmed by another. Only converging evidence can shift the case from curious to extraordinary. Each data packet arriving from Mars is redundantly copied and archived on multiple continents. Delays complicate analysis. Anomaly packets, bursts, fragmentations, deviations are triaged through automated pipelines. Planetary protection officers stand on alert. Transparency is paramount. Even metadata, timestamps, calibration logs is locked for future verification. Meanwhile, global amateur networks contribute observations. Initial public alerts may arise from these volunteers, but agencies release bulletins only after professional confirmation. Communications emphasize clarity without hype. Inside Red Watch, decisions split along three pathways. Conservative, hazardous, extraordinary. Conservative tracks assume anomalies are rare but natural behaviors. Hazardous protocols activate if fragmentations or dust events threaten spacecraft safety. Extraordinary requires at least two independently confirmed, statistically solid anomalies. No single detection, however odd, is sufficient. Only convergent evidence opens the door to engineered interpretations. The operators understand the stakes. In these hours, the playbook is not just procedure, but the manual for the future of planetary science. However, even within the scientific community, several red flags linger in the background, creating a disquiet that mere natural explanations cannot fully assuage. Firstly, there is 3i Atlas's trajectory. Most interstellar objects entering the solar system follow paths with low inclination relative to the plane of the planets. Yet 3i Atlas hugs this plane closely, moving as if it has chosen the most trafficked corridor through the inner system. This alone doesn't imply intent, but it makes astronomers uncomfortably shift in their seats. A second red flag is the rhythmic pulsations in 3i Atlas's light curve. Instead of a steady increase in brightness expected from solar heating, 
Three-Eye Atlas appears to breathe at regular intervals, its light strengthening and fading. More troubling still, these brightness pulses are synchronized with subtle yet distinct changes in the object's velocity and position. Independent data suggests the object is self-propelling, subtly adjusting its trajectory in delicate bursts. This is highly unusual for a natural comet. Many observers also cite the extremely high carbon-to-water ratios, with occasional spikes of metals not anticipated in such quantities. While these characteristics could individually be explained by formation processes, taken together, they form a pattern difficult to reconcile with conventional understanding. The combination of its unusual travel path, pulsating accelerations, and strange chemistry has forced even cautious scientists to quietly acknowledge the possibility that 3 I Atlas might not merely be another natural wanderer. This tension between the mundane and the extraordinary sets the stage for what is to come. Every new observation, every packet of data from Mars, will either reinforce the mainstream views or add weight to the growing doubt that something else may be at play. As night falls and 3 I Atlas approaches its closest encounter with Mars, Scientists know exactly what they need to look for. Fragmentation. Pattern. If the comet breaks apart under the sun's heat, the way those fragments disperse will tell us much about its interior. A natural, loosely bound object would break into multiple small pieces, releasing a slow, massive outflow of gas and dust. But if 3 I Atlas fragments in a more irregular fashion than predicted, the reason will be scrutinized. An asymmetrical change in mass is one explanation, but if the changes align once again with those unsettling brightness pulses, the whispers from within internal mission control rooms will grow louder. Anomalous spectral lines. If the Mars orbiters detect outflows or signatures that cannot be explained by a decaying cometary body, even the most conservative scientists will have to reevaluate their conclusions. Interaction with the Martian atmosphere. This brings us to Mars itself. Not just an observer, but a laboratory through which an interstellar visitor is being observed. Mars's thin atmosphere, faint magnetic field, and the fleet of machines we have placed there offer an ideal stage for interaction. If fragments from 3I Atlas graze the upper atmosphere, they could induce temporary auroras that would ripple across the Martian sky. The most conservative outlook holds that 3I Atlas is still behaving like a comet, albeit an extraordinarily unusual and dynamic one. In this light, its fragmentation, changing luminosity, and strange spectra are merely the extreme edge of natural behavior. If this is the case, the scientific yield is still profound. We learn how diverse interstellar comets can be and how their chemistry pushes the limits of what we thought possible. This outcome protects our models, augmenting them to include strange, rare variations of nature's development. A second possibility carries heavier consequences, the hazard scenario. If 3I Atlas fragments in a poor orbit, it could create a debris field that interferes with Martian satellite pathways. For decades, we have relied on Mars orbit as a safe zone for exploration, with orbiters recognizing vital data and rovers depending on their guidance. Unexpected interstellar shrapnel could disrupt missions, damage instruments, or even disable a spacecraft. While probabilities remain low, the risk highlights how fragile our robotic presence at Mars truly is. A single interstellar disruption could, in theory, wipe out decades of progress in planetary exploration. And then there is the extreme scenario, the engineering scenario, the one that unsettles even the most disciplined scientists. What if 3I Atlas does something that cannot be reconciled with natural processes? A trajectory that shifts with unnatural precision spectral lines that reveal components not created by astrophysical chemistry, or fragmentations that look less like chaos and more like intent. If the evidence even hints at engineering, the implications would reach far beyond astronomy. We would be forced to ask if we have, for the first time, witnessed technology from a non-human intelligence. It is here, between the natural, the hazardous, and the extreme, that the stakes become clear. For whatever the outcome, the scientific response must be beyond delay. Transparency is not optional. Every image, every datum, every anomaly must be shared, checked, and replicated by independent observatories. Redundancy is key. No single reading or one instrument can decide the outcome. If MAVEN detects an ionospheric signature, it must be corroborated by a trailing orbiter or ground-based radio telescopes.
If high-resolution images show fragments, their paths must be cross-referenced with dynamic models. The world cannot afford a narrative built on uncertain air. This is why the highest priority for scientists is not simply to collect numbers. They are writing the record of contact with an interstellar traveler. Even if the results point only to novel cometary chemistry, the textbooks of planetary science will be rewritten. And if the data suggests something engineered, the shift will be monumental. As we move from curiosity to the realization that we may not be the only intelligence creating objects that traverse the void. In either case, what unfolds around Mars is not just a moment of science. It is a mirror held up to humanity's place in the universe.